Hey Guitar Champion, what's going on? Justin Hombach here back from my practice cave and welcome to the newest lesson, the newest John Petrucci lesson, this time the full complete note for note lesson of his song The Odd Father from his new record called Terminal Velocity. Here we go. <laughs> So, The Odd Father. What a crazy name, to be honest. Yeah, it's a song with a lot of odd meters in there and a lot of really cool rhythmical ideas and some cool shreddy stuff and some cool cool chord changes, which I really like. And yeah, this is the full note for note lesson of The Odd Father. If you want the free tabs of this lesson, as always, check the link in the description box. There you can download the tabs, the free tabs of this song and this lesson. So yeah, I hope you liked today's video and today's lesson. I hope you will have a lot of fun with it. And if you like this video and you want to support what I'm doing here and my channel here, then feel free to leave a like, a comment, so the YouTube algorithm is pumping up that video. And of course, subscribe and hit the bell button so you can stay tuned when I'm going to upload some new videos. But before we start with the lesson, let's go to our shoutout section. The way how I say thank you to my community, to you guys, and the section where I'm going to pick two comments of the day. Cat, be quiet, please. Two comments that I'm going to answer and to respond on. So let's start with comment number one. Comment number one is from a girl, actually. Her name is Laura Allison, and she was commenting, Good, I wait for love from you. Heart, heart. Well, <laughs> I know, this is a troll comment or some generated bullshit. Uh, but it's really funny that I'm getting those in the recent videos a lot. I really like them. But stop joking, let's start with the first real comment. Here we go. And the first comment I want to shout out is from Zero Sword. It's from my Abandoned Lesson by Unprocessed, the first Riff ABC and so far the only Riff ABC video out there. And he wrote, I would love to have you as a teacher. And fun fact, you can have me as a teacher. I give Skype lessons. Just write me an email to guitarcoach justinhombach at web.de. I'm going to blend in the email here, or you will find the, the email address in the, in the description box. Just write me an email and we can get in contact for some Skype lessons. And this is not only for you, Zero Swords, this is for everybody out there who's interested in Skype lessons. Okay, let's shout out comment number two. I actually answered the upcoming comment yet, but I will also answer the comment here because I think it's a pretty cool idea. I will be looking forward to that. You've been busy, lol. It will pay off, these songs are gonna be legendary status and these videos should con continually attract new traffic basically forever. First of all, thank you for that. The videos are paying off because they will help you and they inspire you. So, so, the, so this is already a big payoff for me to be honest. But the next part is really interesting. You should get some of those Jason Becker style stick on colored numbered fret markers and use a guitar with a blonde fretboard. Really makes seeing things much easier. Just a thought, have a good one guitar champion. You have a good one as well guitar champion and I think that's a pretty cool idea to have numbers instead of frets like the Jason Becker guitar model. I'm going to put a picture of it here in the video and this is a question to my community out there. Would you like having numbers on my fretboard so you can see better which number or which fret I'm playing? Is that something that would be interesting for you? Just asking, just asking to improve my videos. If this is something where the community would say, the Progress Nation community would say, yes, those numbers could really help to get better and to improve, then I will put some numbers on my guitar. Then I will go to Ibanez and say to them, go put me some numbers on my guitar. That shouldn't be a problem. But I'm asking you, if there's something, write down a comment if you think that could be a really cool idea. Okay, so much for the okay, so much for the shoutout section. Let's start with the lesson. Let's start with the intro of the Odd Father. Here we go. All right, and the intro riff goes like this.
All right, and slow, it goes like this. All right, this intro riff seems easy in the beginning, but it can be really tricky when, with some little nuances there. Or like Kirk Hammett would say, it's the note in between that are fucking with me. Well, let's check out first the harmonic concept, because the harmonic concept is really important for the rest of the song as well. We are in A minor, and we are starting off with this A minor power chord, minor six idea here on the 7th and the 9th fret of the D and on the G string. Going to the minor 6, going back to the power chord, and then we are outlining B7, B dominant 7. Um, and But on the bass we have the 3rd, so we have the 6th fret on the A string. And going from the dominant 7 to the root note. After that we are going to D minor, D minor 9, and then again A with the flat 5, going to E dominant. So our overall harmonic concept is A minor, going to B dominant, going to D minor, going to E major. Yeah, and I would say Petrucci was listening to one of my songs from my prog metal band because we have the same chord progression in one of our songs, really the same. Well, okay, maybe it's not. he was not listening to this because uh, in that song the chord progression was also inspired by another song and there are a bunch of songs out there which are using this chord progression. Uh, maybe I could say he was listening to one of my songs from my prog metal band EOS called Atrocity Defies. You can check it out on YouTube. Click here. Um, but on the other hand, he could also listen, or he could also play a little bit of video games, especially a little bit of Nintendo Switch or a little bit of GameCube, because this is also the chord progression from the main theme of, of Luigi's Mansion. Something like this. <laughs> but so, the chord progression is a really, really cool chord progression with that um, a chord, chord on the second note, which is a dominant seven, which creates this kind of flat five tension, which is using also in the melody. So, definitely worth to check out if you want to write something in that, all, in that kind of style and that kind of color. Really, really interesting. All right, so now let's go to the rhythm section of that intro. So mostly we are dividing the rhythm section of the intro in two different rhythms. This one here. And this one. We are always switching between the chords and the bass string. The bass string can be an open string for 80%, but sometimes it's also a fretted string, a fretted note. And the notes on the power chords are always eight notes and the notes in the in between that are fucking with me are um, played as 60 notes. So we are starting with the chords on the one and then on the two and on the three and and on the four. So one and two and three and four. Second rhythm is one and and three and four. So we are Turning that around and we are now not playing on the upbeat in the second part of the bar We are now playing on the downbeat. So again one and two and three and four and one and two and three and four and Now we are going to take all the notes in between playing with the open A string in the first two bars Then we are going to this section here, the B7 dominant, same rhythm. 
And then we're going to D minor. We're keeping the same rhythm, but on the second bar we're making this here. We have that nice pull off from the third fret from the C to the A, playing the open D and G string, muting the A string and playing this kind of fracture from G major, the G and the uh, B. Then we're going to E, and sorry, before that we're going to A, uh, to another A chord, but this time with a flat five, and here we have the following rhythm. Here we have straight the rhythm where we are playing our power chords on the downbeat. So we have one, two, and three, and so we have so we have one and two and three and four and. Okay, and then we're going to the second part of the intro riff, and here we are not the first variation is we are not playing the melody like this. We are outlining those in thirds. So we have D and F and the C and the E. Then when we are playing the B dominant 7 chord, we are playing the B as the root note now as the bass note. Then we're going straight to E, having this kind of little melody in there. E and G sharp, E and M, sorry A, and E and B. And then we're going to again the A with a flat 5 and the Third, the melody with the um, with the minor six and third, playing the C power chord, sliding to B power chord, and having the A power chord. And this was the intro section, the first riff of the intro. Now let's check out the crazy odd meter odd father riff for the intro. <laughs> Okay, and up to tempo. Alright, and here the tricky thing is we constantly have a switching between 4-4 four, four and 3-4 and but the hard section here is that the um, basic pulse of the rhythm is turning every time and repeating something. Let me break that down for you. First, we have the open A string and our one, one and two and three and four. Then we have this riff here with this 60 note pull off section B, A, G sharp. A, B, F, leading now to the E on the one. Everything so nice and clear now, but on the second bar of the second repetition, the third four, three, four bar, uh, we have this riff here. Uh, sorry. Well, we're going on the A and we are playing the A before the one of the next repetition. So now on the next repetition of the low A string is on the one. It's the D sharp here. So this one turns the complete feeling of this rhythm from one to one. This can be a little bit tricky in the beginning. Now, then we are repeating that first riff, but now instead of this kind of 60 note chunk, we have this one here. Sorry. This kind of diminished arpeggio. A, sorry, B, D, pulling from the D to the B, playing G sharp again, and outlining with that an E major. Now, for the last lick, we have this upgoing melody from E flat to E, from F sharp to G, sorry, from F to F sharp, playing G and G sharp, which resolves into E, uh, sorry, <laughs> no, which resolves into A, of course. Know your notes.
So, and next comes the first melody section. Uh, in the background we still have those intro riff going on, but in the melody we are playing this melody here. We are first starting with the C, minor third of A minor, then we have this melody where we're going from F to E to E flat, D sharp, the major third of B7, then we're going to A, B, the seventh in the root, now we're playing again the C, leading to D, the root note of our D minor chord now. Then we're going to G sharp, the major third of E. And we are leading. Ah, oh, sorry, the D is not from D minor, it's from E, it's a seven of it. Going to G sharp, A, B, and resolving into A. All played with tremolo picking. Then we have this little riff run here. And here we have this little melody in played in thirds. F, D, E, C, E, B, C, B, and between that we have the open A string. So now in comes another variation on the progressive 4-4-3-4 riff, so let's check out this one. So it's basically the same riff, but this time we are playing a lot more on the open E string. Well, we are playing actually all the time on the open E string, the low E string. And then the difference is on the last bar that we are not playing the F and the uh, F sharp and the G and the G sharp as well. Up here on the A string, we're playing it an octave lower on the E string. So we have this section here. The rest stays the same with the fact that we are playing the low E string. Pretty easy, basic idea, but without all of that easy kind of tricky Easy kind of tricky. Uh, all that notes in between, um, stripped down version where Mike is also playing this cool halftime feeling drum groove and yeah. This one guides us to a really really cool transition before our first main theme and uh, yeah the transition goes like this. Some pretty pretty cool melody and chords in there so let's check this one out. Before, before that I have to poop. And it's low. Let me play the last line again. Okay, first off we are starting with a bending from the D to the E, 15th fret to the 17th fret on the B string. Then we are playing this melody. C, B, C, trilla. A, G, A, F sharp. On the G we are doing a little fast bend and bend return. That's perfect. And then we're going to the F sharp. Then we're playing this scale from the F sharp to the E ascending in the E minor scale. And then we have this kind of interval like idea. E, C, sorry, E, 
A, C, G, C, F sharp, A. Then we're going with the middle finger to the G string, 16th fret, playing the B, G, going to the B, and playing A, G as a pull-off, and we're going to F. Which leads us to the next riff, this... Yeah, Mike Potner said today in the uh, little interview stream this Fatal Tragedy riff, kind of riff, which sounds really natural for him, and I think, yeah, it's pretty Petrucci-esque. So let's check out the next cool riff. <laughs> First again we have kind of this rhythm here which is a little bit more clarified, clarified in the last section of the riff where we are only playing the A string. Ah, ich hab das nicht ganz vergessen. Oops, sorry for that little change of light. I forgot to plug in the light. Um, so, and uh, yeah, the actual rhythm is like this. And again, here we have some notes in between, which are really interesting. And in the first section, it's D, C sharp, and C with the F sharp. We have this idea where we're going to the B here on the E string, and then we're playing this pull-off open string idea. A flat, uh, sorry, A, A sharp, B flat, A, G, going to F power chord. Then we are repeating with the rhythm and the notes in between, but this time we are playing the E and the F and D power chord, and then we are playing here the E and the B flat on the D on the G string and playing another pull off uh, open string idea. Sorry, where we're going to the tenth fret. Going to C, B, G and resolving into that open A string. Okay, let me play that rhythm again for you. Which goes, or which leads us to the first theme of the song, the first real melody. So let's check out the first real theme of the song. Here we go. Okay, here is now the chordal progression from the intro really important and in the rhythm it's really inter interesting because Petrucci is combining the chord progression with the rhythm of our last cool riff. Um, but first we are outlining in the melody A minor patio, 7, 10, 9, A, C, E, going to the F and the E, oh, sorry. and jumping to the B which is the root note of the next chord. Going through the A to the E and the E flat. And now we are outlining D minor patio. And the second time with the um, second note here, the uh, 9. So we have 5, 8, 7, 5, 9. Uh, sorry, 5, 8, 7, uh, that's right, five, 7, 9, 10, 
Then we're going to the 13th fret on the G string, the, um, uh, sorry, the 14th fret on the G string, the A. Then we're playing G sharp, F, and on this kind of Arabic sounding phrasing, where we um, hammering and pulling from the F to the G sharp and sliding to the E. Now comes the second part. This starts the same way like the first part. But now we are bending to the D from the C. Then we are bend released to the B into the A again. Again the E and the E flat. Now we're playing this melody. E, B, D going to the G sharp and having this closing melody G sharp, A, B trilla between B and C resolving to the A going to the B section so let's check out the B section here So, and here we are coming off the A and bending from the E to the F. I'm playing this melody, bended F, E, D, E, C, G. Now we're playing this idea and section. And this is really typical Petrucci, two notes on per, two picks per note and two notes per string. And this one playing in octaves, we are starting off with the C, G, going to the um, E, and the D. And now playing this in octave. Then we are outlining this G minor arpeggio. We have the G, D, minor third lying on the B flat, and sliding to the A. Going through the D to the A flat, uh, A sharp, the B flat, sorry. And then we're playing this melody. Again, slow. We have A, G, A, A, octave below, D, E, F, D, uh, E, D, E, E, Octave below, G sharp, D, C, B, A. And then we're going to the again to the A motif, but this time as a variation, as a kind of reprise, uh, playing an octifier, which is really, really typical Petrucci style for, yeah, this is how Petrucci composes music. Playing theme A, theme B, and then theme A again, an octifier with some little variations in this. So this is pretty cool. Let's check out the next section. The second variation is basically, as I said, the same melody, just an octifier. And um, the main difference here is we have this little cool sweep arpeggio thing in it. Where we're playing an I and where we are, where we are outlining A minor arpeggio. Going to the F. Doing this trill between F and E, then C and uh, B, and then we're playing B, G, C, B. And yeah, the rest is basically the same, just an octifier, and leading to the transition melody, which comes next, which is also basically the same idea but an octifier, but we are going to check this one out right now. 
So in the next section is the B section again, but this time everything played an octave higher. So it's pretty basic, pretty easy. You can understand it from the taps. There are two main differences from this section or two new cool licks that we're going to face um, with the new B section. And these two licks are this, the following. Okay, first let's check out lick number one. And lick number one goes like this. And slow. Cool. So we are outlining pretty stretchy pentatonic here, starting on the 20th fret of the E string, playing 20, 15, going to the B string, 17, 15, 17. Now E string, 15, 17, 15, uh, 15, 15. And then we are playing descending scale, 17, 15, 13, and jumping back to the pentatonic shape on the D string, having little string skip here, 17, 14, 12, 14, 17. This is lick number one and lick number two, which is the last lick before we're going to the next transition. And the last lick goes like this. And this lick is a mixture between F, my, F major sorry, and D minor and a little bit of pentatonic. F major and D minor together creates a D minor seventh sound. And yeah, we're starting with the F major shape. Here, 17, 20, 17, and 18, 17, sliding on the G string to 14. And then we are outlining the uh, D minor, which is 15, 17, 15, 14, 17, pull, as a pull off back to 14, and now comes the pentatonic shape, 15, 12, 15, 12 on the D and on the A string. We are sweeping from the G to the B, uh, from, sorry, from the B to the G string, sliding, and then just playing an upstroke on the D string and then sweeping down from the A to the G string. Again, sweep, sweep, pick, sweep, and the rest is played as pull-offs. All right, now we're going to the transition, where from that transition we are leading to the solo, or to the first cool solo section. So let's check out the first transition. Okay, first we're starting with outlining an G sharp with the major, the Lydian 11. This kind of sound here. And here we have the 6th fret on the D string, going to the 5th fret on the G string, 7th fret G string, playing 8, 7, 5 on G string, and going to the 5th fret of the D string. Before that we're going of course to the 3rd fret of the G string, and resolving to the 5th fret. Now we're playing the same thing, just one fret below. Up to that point to the second fret on the G string, then we have this one of the dotted fourth, so dotted quarter note, and then we go to the ninth fret, tenth fret on the B string, twelfth fret B string, ninth fret B string, and ninth fret G string, and then resolving into that melody, the first theme, the first melody from the intro. And after that little reprise from the intro section, we are going to the solo. So let's check out the solo and especially the first pretty cool tapping solo. Here we go. So, okay, so this is the hardest tapping I've ever played from John Petrucci. It's incredibly hard. It's, it looks easy because it's on one string, it not, it's not uh, four, five fingers, eight finger on eight strings, toes and bars and tapping, I don't know, it's harder than that. Why? Because we have to be really carefully with the rhythm. The rhythm is really intense here and if you make one mistake and you were slightly out of the rhythm, the pulse changes immediately and you're out. You're gone, you're done, you're dead. It's, this is like, Dark Souls. One mistake and you're out. Gone. 
go to the next bonfire and restart. Ah, man, this is really, really hard. Okay, but we will defeat this evil Dark Souls boss here. It's, it's, oh, oh. okay, so let's check this one out. The pattern is basically pretty simple, but the main or the hard thing is that sometimes, especially in the pull-off section with our left hand, we really had to have the control down to have every note really precise in their length. If any note is a little bit pulled too early or too late, you're out. Ah, this is, I can't tell it enough. <laughs> really props to Mr. Petrucci here. He really shows what a master of this instrument he is because this is really difficult to get this keyboard kind of sound and to really have this intense extremely tight rhythm okay but the first the pattern is let, let us take a look at the pattern by the first section this is a basic pattern it's basically opens g string and then in the first times we are hammering to the seventh fret then to the eighth fret tapping 14th fret and pulling it back down then repeating it So, but the third time we're playing it, we're not pulling descending, we are stopping with that note, and then we're repeating it. So we need to have the pull off and then the hammer on from nowhere, and to get this one right, to not do ex accidentally this one, going to that note, it's really, really hard, and really tough. Another thing that happens often when I was practicing this was that this happened. My middle finger was going, to, going down too early, so you have to be really careful for the left hand. That this one is really precise, and this looks easy in the beginning. Oh, it's just the notes, just this movement, but we often tend to play it like this. And no, you won't, you are not able to play this part of your blade like this. You really need to have and one tip I can give to you is don't let the index finger down on the string when you're pulling and hammering with the middle finger. The extra tension you get when you have the index finger down is too much. When you have that tension down you tend to <laughs> that a lot of uh, I don't know how to describe it, but having that more tension on your hand and on your wrist and your thumb and your finger, you tend to be sloppy. If you have one movement down for every note, it's a lot easier. So play it more like this. Sorry. And not like this. You see the difference? Not tight. Tight. You see, and then it works pretty fine. Sorry, you have to get the right notes. And so on, so on. Because when one note is a little bit too early and one note is a little bit too late, you're getting out of the rhythm. So, and this is the main idea and the main pull. See, let me check my mobile phone, my camera real quick. So now we have the rhythm pattern done. We can check out the pattern for the left and for the right hand. So first we have, as I said, one, zero, sorry, zero, seven, eight, fourteen. Then we have zero, two, three, um, what is this, ten? Then always the zero, the low G string, as uh, the open G string, sorry. Then we have five, seven, nine, going to five, seven, eight, switching to minor. Now, in the repetition, we are now moving from the eighth fret to the twelfth fret with our tapped hands, uh, sorry, tapped finger. 
The next one is 6, 7 and 10, going to 12. The next one is 9, 10, 15. Just playing once, then we're going to 10, 12, uh, 17. Then we're going here to 14, 16, 19. 14, what's this? 14, 17, 20. Then we're going to 17, 19, 21. Sorry. Then 17, 20, 20 and 23. And 17, 19, 24. And going this an octave low, but still on the G string. So, now what do we have harmonically here? This is pretty interesting as well because we have this kind of pitch axis system which Zetriani uh, is using a lot, and we have the G note always kind of in the bass and the tapping idea, and it's around the G. So, let's check out what harmonically we are going to, what we have here. Whew, sorry. So first of all we have the notes G, D, E flat and B. Sorry, A. And this one creates a G a G with the sixth, the fifth and the second. So a lot of tension in it. It's like minorish kind of G. We have, yeah, you could say it's like kind of minor. Those are the notes that represent minor without the minor third, the minor scale. Um, without the minor third, it's the flat six, the minor six, and the second. So this cannot be Dorian, it cannot be uh, Phrygian, and yeah, and through the minor six, it cannot be any major scale from the modes. So, and then we're going here. And now we have the G, the A, the B flat, the minor third now, and the F, the seventh. Then we have kind of a G Dorian scale, outlining a C, um, C chord, C major chord over the G. So we have here the E now, the major sixth from G, eleven fifths and major six. Going to C minor and creating by that with the outlining C minor over G the normal minor scale again. Now we have the um, augmented five, the minor six and the seven. So it's a G dominant augmented kind of sound. Ah, no, sorry, not augmented. Bullshit, I'm talking bullshit here. Of course, we have the Lydian. Lydian 11, the fifths, the minor seven, creating Mixolydian flat, uh, sorry, Mixolydian sharp 11. Or Lydian flat seven. Depends which country you are. <laughs> some, in some countries it's called Mixolydian flat, uh, Mixolydian sharp 11, and other countries it's called Lydian flat 7. Ha, huh, all those names. All right. And then we are going to the G here. Doesn't change anything. Um, but then we have this idea. Sorry. And here we have the E, the major 6 again, the F, the 7th. And the um, B flat, which is the minor third, so again Dorian. Going to the next step of the scale, can still tell this one to the Dorian scale. And now we're going to G major, because now we have the B and not the B flat anymore. Sorry. Now um, this is some sort of diminished arpeggio, it's an A diminished. A diminished over G represents an, it's an A minor 7 flat 5 and the G in this case is now the 7s uh, but you can see this as well as G minor scale because the second degree of a minor scale is a minor 7 flat 5 and the A is a, a second degree of G so depending when you want to see it as a G it comes from the minor scale without playing the minor third of G. Now we have the minor third of G 
but also the E, so again Dorian kind of scale. Now we have this kind of arpeggio. And this one is another in just another inversion of the A mm, the of the A diminished chord. And that A diminished chord resolves into a beautiful G sus4. Yes, and this is the complete intense tapping section. Whoo, hoo wee, hoo wee, hoo wee. All right, now let's check out the tapping section and the start of the solo. Here we go. So now we're going to this tapping section, which is the start of the solo. Something like this. So, and let me try to play this one fast. Okay, and here the concept behind this one is that we are moving with our tapping and or with our fretted hand and the tapping hand, and we are first of all playing the G minor scale. The G Dorian scale, sorry, we have the E in it. And yeah, we're moving first with our tapping hand, then with our fretting hand, tapping hand, fretting hand, tapping hand, fretting hand. The pattern is nearly the same like the first one, but this time it's not that complex because it's just one pattern. It's only this. It's a triplet pattern, so we can use, or we have a better usage of those six notes. And therefore we are playing ascending the G Dorian scale, first starting 0, 2, 3. I won't say 0 in between that every more, uh, anymore because I think now it's clear that the open G string is between that. So we'd have 2, 3 on the fretting hand, 5 on the tapping hand. Then we go to 7, then we're moving with our fretting hand, 3, 5. Then we go from 7 to 9, moving with our fretting hand, um, 5, 7. Then going to 10, and then... Moving with our fretting hand, 2, 7, 9, 10, 12, 7, uh, 9, 10, 12, 14, 10, 12, 14, 15, 12, 14, 15, 17, 14, 15. And now we have a little bit of a change here. When we've reached the 17th fret, we're going to the 18th fret, and now we are playing again those diminished chords. Sorry. The, playing again this G sus4. And now we're going to the solo section. And we're going to the solo section step by step and phrase by phrase. And we're starting with the first phrase, which goes like this. This is the first phrase. We are now in the G Dorian scale. The overall vibe and mode, of, I would say, is still G Dorian. Uh, sorry, we are on the G pentatonic scale here, and the overall vibe and the scale and mode is still G Dorian. And we're starting with this kind of bluesy phrase. When we're sliding from the third fret into the fifth fret, with a little bit of pinch harmonic and vibrato and making it scream. And we're playing F, G, B flat, C. Doing half tone bend, going to that flat five, that bluesy flat five, flat five. Then we're doing bend release, pulling to the uh, B flat, going to the G. Now with the row technique in our ring finger, we're going to the C, B flat, and bending from the C up to the D. Bend release, and hammering from the B flat to the C. Let me play that phrase again. Coming to the next phrase, which goes like this. Here we are bending from the minor third. We're now in this kind of. 
pentatonic box and here we are first bending from the minor third the 10th fret on the B string to the 4th in G the full tone bend from the 11th fret to the 13th fret then with our ring finger and the roll technique we are playing 12th fret G 12th fret D going to the 2nd, the 9th on the 10th fret doing a little bit of hammer on pull up and going to the 12th fret on the G string Then again with the roll technique, 12th fret on the D string. Reserving to the 10th fret of the G string with the index finger. And now we're sliding with our ring finger from the 10th fret D string to the 8th, uh, sorry, the 10th. Ah, Justin, come on. From the 12th fret <laughs> um, to the 10th fret and pulling into the 8th fret. Resolving to the G into the 10th fret of the A string. So again. And the slide is really quick. It's more like this. So not this, this. Sorry? Yes. Let me play those two phrases together. Coming to the next phrase, which goes like this. And slow. And first up, we are starting here with the 8th fret on the G and on the D string with our roll technique. G, D. Going to the 10th fret, and then we are playing the 8th note twice as the 60th note. Going with our, in, uh, with our picky to the 12th fret. Then we're sliding to the 13th fret with our index. Playing the 14th fret on the G string. Sorry. Resolving to the 15th fret on the G string with the 13th fret on the D string like a pedal note. And then we have this triplet, um, descending triplet run. Fifteen, seventeen, nineteen, uh, sixteen, eighteen, twenty, nineteen. Uh, sorry, seventeen, eighteen, twenty. Okay, those three phrases together. Okay. Coming to the next phrase, which goes like this. Here we are first starting with this kind of blues phrase, going from the middle finger bending the 20th fret up to the 22nd fret, playing then 17th fret on the E string, and 20th fret on the E, uh, 20, yeah, 20th fret on the E string. We are playing this one three times, three times, then bending quickly up from the 20th fret on the E string, 20th fret B string, and half tone fret from the 18th fret on the B string. When we're playing with the roll technique, middle finger 19, 19. And the next phrase. Now, in the next phrase, we have some 60 notes, and we're first bending 12th fret on the B and on the G string slightly with our ring finger. I bend in the down direction, then pulling back. This is why I bend in the down direction with one finger because it's part of the move of the pull-off movement. Pulling to the 10th fret and playing 12 10 on the D string. Then we're bending up, bend release, pulling to the 10th fret and bending from the 14th fret to the 17th fret. I'm playing 10 12 10 again. Okay, after all of this bending action, let me retune my guitar and then I play all those phrases together. Mm -hmm. 
So now we have a pretty pretty cool open string kind of riff and it goes like this. <laughs> This one is divided in two octaves, and we're first starting on the A, the D, and the G string. Playing C, D, then on the D string playing D flat, oh, sorry, F, G, G sharp, A, and then C and D on the G string. Then we're playing C and D on the D string, and the same thing just not to five. But this time on the D, G, and B string. Now comes a pretty pretty cool arpeggio and slow it goes like this. Up to tempo. And here we are outlining a B flat major 7. Starting off with the major 7. Here on the A. B flat, then we have a string skip on the E string where we're playing F, G, uh, sorry, F, A, and tapping the B flat, the root note, pulling a descending. Then we're playing the fifth and the Lydian 11 on the 15th fret and the 14th fret of the D strings, the uh, F and B. Playing the uh, major third on the 17th fret of the A string. And going up, but this time we are playing in B flat, um, B flat nine chord by overplaying the or not playing the B flat here, going straight to the C. Now we are tapping into the E and going back. Well, this you can see this a little bit more as an F major arpeggio because we have the F, the A, the C, and the E, F major seven going to the um, D again, and up to the F and the, ha, huh, come on, the A. So you can see this one as a mixture between B flat major 7 and F major 7. In the end, before we go into the next section, we have this kind of pedal note figure here. Where we are hammering into the 17th fret, pulling back and hammering to the 16th fret. And resuming to the 15th fret on the B string. Now next comes this pretty cool thriller passage where the guitar sounds a little bit, yeah, it sounds a little bit more bluesy, like uh, when you are playing through a harp or something like this. And it's just a fast thriller between the minor third, in this case the B and the D. I'm playing this one chromatically down a half step until we reach the A and the C and resolving to the G. And now key wise we are more in the E minor scale or especially more on the E Phrygian scale or E Phrygian dominant scale. And after the trailer section we get to this kind of bluesy section which goes like this. And here first we are bending from the 14th fret full tone to the 16th fret and then we are playing this line. 14-12 on the G string, 14-12 on the D string, repeating that. Then again that fast slide that we know from that phrase here. But this time E from the 14th fret to the 12th fret on the A string, pulling to the 10th fret. I'm resolving into the 12th fret of the E or root note. Now comes a little bit of bending action. Where we're first bending from the 17th fret. One and a half step and doing this wide vibrato on the bending. And then we're going to the 19th fret on the E string. Bending it up one and a half step. I'm playing this phrase 20, 17, 20, switching between the B and the E string. Again. How's oh, that? And now comes one of my favorite phrases from the solo section and goes like this.
here we have especially this kind of melody this chromatical descending melody we're going from the seventh to the major six to the minor six and to the fifths but we are outlining this one with a little bit of legato section in between that and first we're starting off with seven eight seven zero on the b string then comes nine seven zero seven nine on the g string and we're playing seven eight on the b string seven ten seven on the e string and eight seven on the b string again this is the first bar then comes basically the last uh, what is this one two three four five six seven and the last eight notes but this time not with the tenth fret here but instead with the ninth fret and now comes this idea where we have nine seven zero and then skipping to the e string playing seven eight seven and eight seven on the b string and after that we're playing nine seven on the g string 8-7 on the B string and again 9-7 on the G string going to 7-5 B string playing this one twice on the B and on the G string and sliding to the B on the D string with the 9th fret now comes this melody and here we are sliding from nowhere to the 2nd fret of the D string the E going to the flat 5 of it the 3rd fret of the G string Sorry, bending from the 8th frets to the 10th fret, and release, pulling to the 6th fret, and sliding on the G string from the 7th frets to the 9th frets. Then we are bending from the 15th fret to the 17th fret, doing a slow bend. We have one quarter note, uh, two, one half note time for it. And now comes this Phrygian minor pentatonic kind of idea. And first we are hammering and pulling from the E to the G sharp and back to the E, 12th fret, 16th fret, 12th fret, going to the D on the B string, 15th fret, and then we're playing E, F, E, back again to the D, then to the E again, 12th fret on the E string, and then playing D, pulling to the B, hammering to the C, pulling back to the B. I'm playing A, B, A, 14th fret, 12th fret, and 14th fret. And then we're resolving into the G sharp, the B, um, A on the G string and the B on the E G string. Playing again the G sharp and the D, and then we have a fast trill on between the 17th and the 18th fret on the B string, the E and the F. And now comes a pretty pretty cool 60 note string skipping octave kind of lick and idea. I think this is a really really intense way to end the solo or a really cool way to end the solo. And in slow it goes like this. Up to tempo. Okay, the chords that we are outlining here, uh, just basically playing the arpeggios, are D minor, C minor, G minor, F major. D minor. And the first D minor shape goes like this. 22, the root, going to the fifth on the 17th fret, 18th fret the minor third, and 17th fret the second. And then we're playing this one octave low, playing this one ascending and, de ascending and descending, going another octave below, and going up to our highest octave. And now we're playing this same pattern just for C major, taking everything down one full step and making out of the minor third the major third and then we're getting this shape here.
everything picked as alternate picking as well, of course. And then we're going to G minor. But now we are playing the mm, the major six, the E, going to the B flat my, uh, to the B flat, the minor third, going to the G and the seventh of the G. So those are our intervals for the G minor chord. Oh, sorry. This stretch can be a bit, tr a bit tricky. We have the 24th fret, going to the 18th fret, 20 and 80 on the B string. And then a basic 5-3, 5 string sweep arpeggio on F major. Going to 3 string sweep arpeggio. And 5 string sweep arpeggio on D minor. Resolving to the A. Yeah, and this is the end of the solo. This is a complete solo section. After the solo we are going to the transition kind of melody. You know this melody, we've done this one before here on that lesson. And then we're going to the last part of this song. And the last part goes like this. So, and the last section is actually again our... This melody here on this part, but we are outlining a bit different. We're playing it like this. This is the first section. We're starting on the 17th fret of the G string instead of the 13th fret on the B string and then we're playing this pedal note idea where we're adding to the 17th fret on the G string the C, the A, the F, the E and the C an octave below. Bending from the 17th fret B string and resolving into the 16th fret of the B string. Now we, now we have another pedal note idea which goes like this Here we're starting on the 16th fret on the B string and playing between the 16th fret B string and the 16th fret D string. Recommend to play this one with our middle finger and the index finger. Going to the 17th fret and the 19th fret. Playing 19 on the G and the B and 19 on the D string. And then we're starting from the 19th to the 20th fret and continuing with the following line. We are resolving to the 21th fret and then we're playing 16 on the G and the E string. Sorry. Going 16, 16, 16, 16, 17, 19. 17 on the B string. Bending from the 19th fret E string to the 20th fret. And resolving into our root note, in this case, the A. And then we have this finish line here. This kind of concept we already know from the intro or for the riff in the beginning, but here we are expanding it. We are starting with the same bar where we are playing in third with always the A string as a low pedal note. We are going to the pull off in between that. And we have 8, 5, 7, 3, 5, oh sorry, 8, 5, 7, 3, 5, 2, 3, 2. Next bar is, oh sorry. This one here, 12, 8, 11, 7, 8, 5, 7, 3, with the 11th fret creating that A harmonic minor kind of feel. And then the next bar is 15, 12, 14, 11, 12, 8, 11, 7, continuing descending, 8, 6, 7, 3, 5, 2, 3, 2, and playing outlining in diminished chord with the relevant, relevant low str uh, open string in between that. So 5, 3 on the D string, 6 D string, D string, 3 D string, 5, 2, 4 on the low E string, 1 on the low E string, and resuming to the A, which is the last note of our song, The Oddfather. 
Okay, so much for this big lesson. If you like the lesson, then of course feel free to leave a like, leave a comment and subscribe, hit the bell button and share this video maybe to some of your friends who could be interested in learning the odd father. All right, I hope I'm going to see you in my next video. So far, cheers and stay progress. Bye.